Hey, what's up? It's Clayton, and I'm here in Costa Rica in the Osa Peninsula, and I am finishing up a yoga retreat and ended up having a conversation with a friend named Matt, and we were talking about goals. We were talking about goals and the hidden cost of setting goals. And the reason why I'm putting this video out is because I can see in many ways how it directly relates to being in a relationship or having the goal of being in a relationship, which I'll talk about in just a second. But to set this up, I wanna give you just a little personal story uh, about myself and about my journey as an entrepreneur, as someone who was in the corporate world for my 20s and then transitioned into uh, my own coaching practice, which I've been doing for the last six years. And the hidden cost that I experienced when I set out on this mission to build my my business. So I had a certain goal about how much money I wanted to make. I had a certain goal about how many clients I wanted to work with. I had goals around creating digital products that I could uh, give to people that would impart any insight that I had and be able to create an impact. And in doing that and setting myself up to become someone who could follow through and create these things, I became a very driven and I already was driven, but I even became more driven. I became more focused. I became more future focused as well, seeing into the future. I became a problem solver, being able to anticipate problems before they were occurring and being able to, to get through those things. And somebody who was thinking, breathing, and eating work, uh, even, when I, even when I slept. <sighs> just even saying that, it feels like it gets me back into this this place of this just revved up, this revved up internal engine. And the cost of that was something that seemed a little bit more um, nebulous. It wasn't quite as clear until I got to a place where I, I thought I wanted to be, where I started achieving the amount of money that I wanted to make. I started uh, having the amount of clients that I wanted to, make, wanted to have. Um, I realized that who I had become in pursuit of the goal was someone that could not distinguish that I had arrived at the place I once wanted to arrive at. So I'll say that again in a different way. Um, I was unable to see that I had arrived at a place where I could finally relax, at a place where I could finally give myself permission to be uh, a relaxed, calm, present individual that was actually truly able to serve people. So sometimes, and let me know if you can relate to this, uh, we set these goals in life externally. And often what can happen if we are not staying connected to ourselves on this path is we end up abandoning a state of being that we ultimately want in pursuit of that goal. So for me, uh, I could no longer relax. I could no longer stop and be grateful because who I identified as is a problem solver, as somebody who gets stuff done. And so therefore, even when everything's done, I'm looking around for other things that need to get done. I'm looking around for more money that can be created, more ways that I can expand my business, which then set me up to not have a fulfilling experience of achieving these goals, of achieving uh, th this path that I set forward on. So part of my journey in this has actually been learning how to give myself permission to not feel guilty when I'm relaxing, to actually stop and look backwards and see the accomplishments and the things that I've been able to create and be able to sit in stillness around that and feel fulfilled and not have this, this driving identity to get more and more done. So how does this apply to relationships? Well. I was thinking about it in terms of, of this concept. When we are able to gracefully dance with being lonely, when we are able to be on the path of mastery, when we are lonely and in around loneliness, when we are able to, in some ways, let's say master or be on the path of mastering loneliness, we set ourselves up to be able to master relationship with another person. This is what I see happen all too often. When people are lonely or when people are single, 
um, and I can speak for myself as well, uh, there can be this lack of rapport with being lonely. There can be this way in which uh, I might disconnect from the experience, maybe distract myself with my cell phone, um, perhaps uh, take action and execute and do more things so I don't have to feel what it's like to be lonely. And if you can relate to that, what often happens is then what, what we do is we practice disconnecting from ourselves because we don't like how we're feeling. And when we practice disconnecting from ourselves, that is the quality of the relationship that we are creating internally. And then unfortunately, when we do find someone that we want to be with, we bring forth the practicing of disconnection into that relationship. So we actually have less of an ability, less of a chance, less of a practice of learning how to actually connect because we've been practicing disconnecting from feeling lonely and feeling bad by distracting ourselves with food, TV, picking up our phone and checking social media when we start to feel anything that is uncomfortable. So the, the invitation in all of this is that if you want to practice relationship, if you want to master relationship and you want to be able to uh, build the scaffolding and the structure to create deeper, more fulfilling relationships outside of you, it starts with the way that you relate to yourself now as a single person. Are you hiding from the experience? Are you running from it? Is it something that you're trying to avoid? Are you, are you making it wrong and are you judging it? Because if that, those are the skills that you're practicing, judgment, running, hiding, disconnecting, you're gonna bring that into any external relationship that you create and it will not be fulfilling and it will most likely ultimately end. So notice when you pick up your phone to distract yourself from a certain feeling. Notice what habits you have as a single person right now that have you abandoning yourself and not being present. And rather than doing that, practice staying connected with yourself. Even if it's for just a short amount of time, taking a couple deep breaths, being with the experience, no matter how bad it feels, maybe you can practice loving that. Maybe you can practice actually being curious and open to it and trusting that whatever experience is coming your way that is uncomfortable, it is merely an ingredient and another building block for you to continually create successful relationships outside of you because you're practicing the most important one, which is the one that you have with yourself. My name is Clayton Olson, and if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to this channel. Uh, click on a couple of the links below. I've got a webinar called The Three Keys to Attracting a High Quality Man, uh, and I've also got a guide called The Eight Secrets to Create a Rock Solid Relationship. It's all in the description below this video, and I look forward to seeing you soon.